Hello, welcome to Model Kit Stuff. First impressions time. Today we're looking at Hobby Boss's HMS Agamemnon. No, it is Agamemnon. Would you believe they just spelt it wrong? <laughs> Welcome to, um, <laughs> I can't stop laughing at that, I really, you know what, I didn't even notice that when I purchased it, um, I guess um, if English isn't your first language, it's not the um, easiest word to spell, um, but I'll be honest, I think they could possibly check, <laughs> but anyway, um, there we go, uh, HMS Agamemnon is actually Agamemnon. Um, so if you go into scale mates and put that in, you will struggle to find it because they correctly listed it under its name. Um, it's a 1 to 350 scale Hobby Boss uh, ship kit and I'm hoping that there's less mistakes in the actual kit. Um, if you're not familiar with Hobby Boss um, uh, ships, they're very much like a trumpeter ship, the same company uh, fundamentally. So what you get is the same style of uh, precision plastic molding, same style of instructions, same, same style of uh, color call outs. Um, so uh, we're not going to expect anything unusual uh, in here just because it's it's Hobby Boss. Um, the kit dates from 2017. I think they also brought a sister ship out, uh, Lord Nelson, and and she's one of the very last pre Dreadnought ships. In fact, she's launched um, just after Dreadnought. So um, she, she was the last design to um, pre-dreadnought design to go into construction effectively and we can we can see that she's um, almost there really um, so I've bought this for a particular project um, we'll talk about that um, at the end um, but yeah um, the last of the pre-dreadnoughts um, a lovely looking ship um, not huge ship either so um, yeah as we look at the box, we can see um, it gives us um, a nice view, top-down view of what you're getting. So you get to see um, the lay of the land. Shows us the photo etch that we're getting. Some of these might be multiple, so there could be more. Gives us a little bit of um, history. And the sides show us the same um, on uh, each side, which is basically the, the top information. And then as we go here, we've got um, a couple of profile views um, and the usual 14 plus warnings. It's not a toy. And uh, it gives you a view uh, of your decals as well so that you can prepare yourself for the disappointment. A little bit of potted history for those of you not familiar with HMS Agamemnon. Um, she's not the first Royal Navy ship to have that name famously uh, there was an HMS Agamemnon at Trafalgar and so when she was named uh, Agamemnon she took on her, her battle credits also which is the way it works in the Navy um, she was um, they started construction before they started um, construction of um, Dreadnought but she um, didn't come into service until after Dreadnought. So she sort of str straddles that. Uh, and her sister ship, Lord Nelson, is the last pre-Dreadnought ship. So um, as a class, they're the last of the pre-Dreadnoughts. Um, and, and you can very much see that in her look. Um, she then um, went on into the First World War to be assigned um, Channel Fleet, um, nothing of note there, then gets assigned to the Mediterranean Fleet um, where she does get involved in the Dardanelles campaign uh, and she's also credited with, and I, I guess there's not too many ships that manage to do this, shooting down a Zeppelin, um, which I think is quite a feat to be honest. Um, she also uh, is the ship that the Ottoman Empire um, signed the armistice on, 
on board her. Um, and then after the war, she was used as a radio control target ship. Not quite sure how that worked. Um, and she was actually the last surviving pre-Dreadnought ship in the Royal Navy um, when her service um, ended in 1926, being scrapped in 1927. She says, a shame, but uh, we have a, a history of scrapping ships that we should keep as museums, but there you go. Anyway, uh, she's got two twin 12-inch guns, four twin uh, and two single 9.2-inch guns and 24 single 12-pounders, uh, along with five 18-inch um, torpedo tubes. So she was fairly well um, armed um, and fairly well laid out, which I think is why um, she she was a successful ship, to be honest. Um, but you can see she's got she's got a combination of new stylings and layout and old with the stone galleries and and what have you. So quite an attractive ship. Inside the box and at the top we've got our uh, paperwork, instructions, paint chart, and um, the usual hobby boss. Um, advertising leaflet we'll come back to that in a minute um, then we've got our bag of parts so we've got the two-piece hull our sprues all carefully either individually packed or foam wrapped and we've got a fair number of those we've got a single piece deck slide molded um, upper deck and then we've got our photo extra. We've got one, two, three, four photo etch frets, um, some anchor chain, and our disappointing decals. Right then, let's start with our instructions. We've got the uh, typical hobby boss stroke trumpeter instruction layout. Um, we've got black and white landscape stapled with um, a depiction of the uh, model. Um, I continued to spell incorrect uh, name. Um, then we've got the please read before operation or construction, if you like. It talks about uh, tools and process, carefully removing parts and so on. We've got some instructions on applying decals. Um, and then we've got a list of items that we're going to use um, through the instructions, so that the, the key of icons. And that is uh, the first page. Oh, on the top there, we've got the kit number, which is 86509. Then we've got our sprue map, and the parts are actually numbered, so you can use this for um, cross-reference, should you need to. Um, so what we can see is we've got uh, that deck there and that slide molded um, upper deck section and our two um, hull halves there, which hopefully um, we're going to have nice plating on. And then we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight plastic sprues, four frets of etch, chain and decals. Ah. And then we start st step one. Um, how odd. Yeah, so in the step number, they've put the word step and a little silhouette of um, a ship across the number, which well, it's a bit, a bit odd, not sure why they've done that, but anyway. Um, construction starts with the hull. You can see it's a standard sort of approach with um, braces, which also have deck supports in, um, plus a couple of smaller braces at the, the, the bow and stern there. Um, so that all looks really nice and a sensible starting point. Then we're putting the deck in. Um, single piece deck, so that's nice and easy. Step three and four, um, two things that I wouldn't do at this stage. Um, 
my experience with that uh, recently uh, on the war spy is it's easy to damage so don't put it on yet put it on towards the end um, and it's the same with that by all means put the shaft lines in quite often that's needed for the process of filling and sanding prior to painting but uh, the, the actual propellers and the uh, rudder you, you can leave to towards the end because uh, it does get knocked it's, it's just a fact of life so I'd be leaving those a bit later or part of them at least then step five and and this is largely sensible we're putting on um, what I term deck furniture so we've got cable reels we've got ventilation we've got capstans fair leads um, some of the internal constructions which look fairly bereft of detail to be honest how much of that will be seen when the deck goes into place I don't know but uh, you know there's bound to be um, windows and doors cable runs and stuff in in that lot um, we've got our first bits of photo etch going on um, which are some form of um, walkway frame or s s I don't know don't know quite what that is um, and then we've got the the gaff and uh, jack staffs I wouldn't be putting those on at this stage either um, for the same reason that I wouldn't be putting the gallery on you're just going to be knocking it off so towards the end of the build when you're putting the the, the railings on um, that's the that's the time to do that I think step six and we've got this central um, structure with this um, uh, deck um, I'm gonna guess that they could probably call it a, a boat deck or something like that I'm not sure um, lots of little individual uh, plastic stanchions to go in um, and um, some photo etch uh, brackets and uh, windows and bits and pieces we're putting in the chain in at this stage and we're putting some deck mounted um, guns in step eight and we've got bulkheads and ladders going in along with not quite sure what that is we've got got some booms going in not quite sure what those are quite unusual looking things step nine and ten and we're building up um winding gear um which is being mounted at the back end of this deck in step 10 along with lots and lots of deck guns so we make four of those we can see them being placed all these deck guns um what looks like some form of ammunition box and then some other little structures as well again a little bit bereft of detail 11 and 12 um, and ah, right there we have a boat deck going on um, so this is um, a shelter deck um, uh, is how I describe that uh, whether that was the term they used I don't know but uh, we've got a shelter deck and then we've got um, a boat deck above it um, we've got um, a small section of deck there at the top that might be um, searchlight platform or something like that possibly and then in step 12 we're building up the bridge areas with more deck photo etch ladders um, photo etch gussets which is nice to see um, inclined ladders as well as vertical ladders and uh, a couple of gun tubs going on then we're building our uh, funnels so we've got um, two different sizes uh, looks like the larger one is going towards the uh, rear of the ship uh, then we've got a couple of um, structures going in there um, one's probably a map room um, not sure about the other one I don't think we'd have the wheelhouse there would we um, but there is a ship's wheel being built up there um, whether that's the secondary steering wheel I am not sure but some photo etch on the funnels separate piping which is nice um, yeah and that the funnel cap is all photo etch so that could be fun 
All the boat shocks are photo etched. Lots and lots of those going on, which is nice to see. And then uh, what looks, looks like some form of raft, I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure what that is. Uh, then we're building up the ship's boats. We've got um, a various number of steamed launchers, uh, long boats, various different um, rowing boats of various different types. Step 21, we're placing those um, boats. So to be honest, the, the uh, construction of this is all, all largely making sense, other than the one or two bits I've pointed out. It's a sort of sequence that I would do. Um, then we've got more boats going on top of those boats. Um, as always, no, I, I don't know why they don't supply chocks for that. You, you'll have to, um, you have to sort of balance them while they dry. Right, then we're building up the mast, um, and this looks like um, this is the aft mast because we've got three of those on there, and we're building, and we've got the um, derrick there, and the, the lifting derrick with three uh, blocks on. So that is definitely the, uh, I guess they'll call that the main mast. All looks very nicely detailed and all of that except for the ladder is pretty much um, plastic the the um, pulleys there are photo etch but most of this is plastic so that's good so yeah there we can see the tripod legs going on mounting of the main mast um, more ladders going up the um, up the legs there the tripod legs step 26 and we're building the foremast up um, similar sort of arrangement for to etch gussets um, building up the spotting top and then the, the rest of the uh, mast and the yards um, and then another derrick going on step 28 putting in the uh, foremast then we've got uh, an additional deck going into place in step 29 with photo etch support so that'll look all nicely scaled ah and on there we're adding the um, ship's wheel that we built up earlier um sub assembly four um and we've got the binnacle and bits and pieces going in so that's effectively your bridge there um got some search lamps more um, deck armament going in. Um, then we've got the bridge wings uh, made out of photo etch going on. Step 31, we're starting to add railings. Um, we've got more ladders going into place. So where are they going? It's a little bit hard to see, but I think they're going up the back of the up each side of the of the mast there um, then we've got some uh, davits being mounted on the side of the structure there step 33 anchors um, ships boats that are, are slung from the the hull and we've got the instructions for making them up there As you're putting the ship's boats on here, um, I, I would put the davits on, but maybe leave the boats off until you've got the railings on. Um, then what we've got, we've got some, well, we've got the boarding ladders um, there, and we've got the little copper um, life buoys, which get slung towards the back. You can see them going on there. Then we've got all these booms for the torpedo netting, um, we've got photo etch torpedo netting, which is in its stowed position. That's really nice as well. Um, more booms going on. So quite a few parts. Nice little build, actually. Uh, then we're on um, armament. So we've got main and secondary doubles and singles being built. So we can see main armament, singles, double secondaries. Uh, and we can see them all being placed there. Um, so 
one main gun each end and then you've got a number around it so like i say the last pre-dreadnought arrangement and then finally step 40 um we've got painting up the nameplate agamemnon which looks like they might have spelt it right on the plastic kit which is good um and then we've got the the last railings going on and a couple of life boys and there you have it built that is um, a good set of instructions, actually. Nice and clear to follow. Uh, build steps are largely logical. Nothing wrong with that. Paint shout out next. Um, we've got uh, Mr. Hobby, Vallejo, Model Master, Tamia, and Humbrol all listed in amongst the, the paints there. Um, so they're saying what's... Um, 16 that's for the um propellers so that, that should be bronze then we've got one two three for the gray um one seven seven for the um anti-fouling lower hull um then we've got uh, a deck tan which they're saying is humbrel nine interesting um flat black boot line which is wrong it, in real life it's gloss so at this scale should be satin um, and then f off white for the ship's boats okay right let's get the disappointing bit out of the way shall we decals there we go flags um, we've got two flags um, i would argue that the sizes of both of those are incorrect for the scale of the ship that should be smaller that should be larger. Um, you've basically got a fluttering style and a straight style. Obviously, if you're gonna, um, you're gonna really want to use the straight style, put it on some foil, and then you can um, fold it and shape it as you wish. Um, so we've got that, but we've not got depth markers. We've not got signal flags. We've not got admiral's flags. We've not got um, the um, signage. Or, or any signage to be honest but we've not got the ship's name to go um, um, on the stern or on the structure in in brass so um, pretty rubbish really but we knew they would be because they usually are there we go that's hopefully the most dif uh, disappointing part of the kit. anchor chain nothing wrong with that blacken that up and that'll look all right they're elongated uh, chain links, so they'll look all right when they're out to etch is the usual trumpeter style brass looking alloy. I've no idea what it is. Um, it can be a little bit soft, I find. Um, so take care when you're bending this. But uh, as always, it's very well laid out. It's easy to get to. Nice long gates so that you've got plenty of space for removing them. They're not you know the gaps around them are, are decently spaced um, folding lines are already marked in so it's easy to know where you're folding them um, railings in this instance are all pre-cut so that looks nice uh, ladders uh, basic but um, look uh, look correct as in you know it really lifts the ship a little bit that you in this photo etch rather than plastic um we've got a roof and um a base for the stern gallery um i think that would have been either um wood or metal grating and so that's probably um somewhat simplified um that is what goes around the um edge of it there so those are your braces that that go underneath and then that becomes what goes around so it can be a little bit difficult to shape those because you've got to get around that curve and you've got to get around the elliptical um point there so uh, care with that definitely you want to be annealing that before you do anything and then the rest of it is ship's ladders and then we've got all this um lovely railings to go on so that is your photo etch mainly railings um but one or two gussets and bits and pieces um, things that are obviously missing, they could have put oars in, uh, to be quite honest. They could have done the cable reel 
uh, frames in photo etch um, they, they could have done some rigging um, on on the masts in photo etch um, they could have done the cables for the uh, two big crane booms uh, so there's other things they could have done but you've got the basics here plastic parts next and I'm doing these in reverse order so I can put them back in the box the way they came out just to make sure I get uh, do a better job of the packing um, so uh, deck let's have a close look at this well it's nice and crisply molded um, as we'd expect to be honest we've got our hose pipes there which look correctly shaped they look nice um, the uh, wood deck itself is very nicely done so no issues with painting and weathering that up that looks great we've got the bases for all our guns molded in we've got some some details molded into the decks um, some skylights and what have you but in the main um, most of what is going on the deck is being added on so uh, we've got bollards molded in which is making life easy probably um, and then like I say we've got all these little skylights at the stern but that's a nice little deck and when I put it down um, there's a little bit of lift in it so it's not it's not dead flat but nothing that <clears throat> your adhesive's not going to sort for you nothing wrong with that next comes this um, shelter deck and this is completely smooth so um, a steel deck uh, the detail on the net on the ends is nice we've got um, we've got some hand rungs we've got some um, windows that are shuttered closed um, we've got one or two um, uh, scuttles same on this end we've got some um, ready-use lockers um, fitted in there and some more nicely uh, detailed windows and nicely done cable reels they are very very slight you'll notice them under paint and a wash but they are difficult to see um, which means they're not too thick and overscaled so that is nicely done yeah no issues with that the uh, the bulkheads are not too uh, thick and chunky so uh, you're not worrying about having to replace it because it's looking out of scale so for me that's a nice part actually nicely done it's a little bit bowed um, but when we put the braces in and glue that down that should straighten up nice Fret H and I'm pleased to be able to say that the nameplate has the name of the ship spelled correctly they have added the missing M from the uh, box and instruction artworks um, so uh, this is all very nice and it feels small um, because I've just been recently looking at, at my one two hundred Shine Horse kits. So this this feels really quite small in comparison. Um, but you've got nicely laid out parts. I still don't really know what they are. If anyone can tell me what they are, which stick out from the the side of the superstructure, um, I don't know at all. Um, loudspeakers i don't know no. um, but we've got the um bridge deck there we've got the base of the uh forward funnel um and then we've got this um deck here uh which is all very nice and crisp i i don't like it when they put on the scale um and other wording on the on the name plates particularly because quite often they put information on there that you don't want on there so i wouldn't want it to say 1350 that's a personal thing obviously and it says scale british battleship um well yeah I'd, i wouldn't want any of that on quite happy with just hms agamemnon but again i know that's personal but personally i will remove that but actually, I won't be using this at all because I have a different plan for this. But we'll talk about that at the end. But yeah, lovely parts. Through J now, we have two of these. Um, and we have some slide moulding going on there. Um, and at this end as well. So we can see these lumps means that there's a, a mould sl slid in. 
which means all of these guns have got nice open ends which is lovely um, they are uh, nicely done everything's crisp we've got no no real flash a little bit of um, uh, mold edging that needs to be um, scraped off I mean strictly speaking it's flash but it's not like huge chunks of it um, so this is all pretty much armament we've got some davits up here which are really finely molded careful clean up of those we've got our turrets which are nicely done not with rivets but um, they would have only been oversized anyway so I, I think that all looks um, right we've got the bases there uh, we've got a nicely done single piece anchor um, and then we've got a number of small pieces um, binnacle we've got our little copper life boys these are for the guns to mount on so they will be poseable although no blast bags so you'll have to model those yourself if you wish um, all sorts of small parts here um, then we've got capstones cable reels of different types fair leads uh, some of our mast parts are here as well yeah nothing wrong with that nothing wrong with that at all Sprue uh, D now, this came in a bag on its own, completely wrapped in, in foam. Um, and we've got, we've actually got some quite large parts on here. Um, so we've got all the structures that go down uh, onto the deck before the shelter deck goes on. And you can see they're completely bereft of detail. So you might want to do some research and add your own um, scuttles, ladders, uh, watertight doors and what have you. Uh, we've got the propellers on there which um, they're nice and uh, relatively thin so I don't have any real problems with those. Um, so some careful clean up so you don't lose the shape on the blades and you'll be okay. Some very very thin booms again very careful clean up required on those. Um, then we've got our shaft lines uh, a frames for the shafts, which are not bad, although I think the A frames look a bit chunky. A little bit of research on there. I reckon they should be a little bit more aerodynamic than that. Might be wrong, but I think they should be. Um, our rudder, usually a candidate for a bit of sink, the rudder, but this one uh, appears to be okay. Um, there is no. Um, anodes on here though so you might want to also think about adding anodes possibly um, right then we've got the um, shelter deck bulkheads it's a little bit scrappy around the edges needs a little bit of cleaning up just a bit of uh, seam scrape uh, we've got our mast parts yard arms we've got some uh, search lamps or signal lamps there, more booms, a couple of gun tubs there, nicely done. Yeah, that's very, very nice. F and that's mainly dealing with the supports for the the hull um, but we do have the boat deck here um, which is depicted as another steel deck but it's a nice bit of molding a little bit of seam scrape to clean up um, and you're going to have to deal with the ejector pins but they are all raised so they'll sand out nicely so nice and easy no problems with that
Sprue K and this is the other sprue we've got two of and these came together again fully wrapped in foam so well protected. Um, we've got some fairly thin parts on here, we've got more davits, we've got a lot of um, booms and the various support legs for the shelter deck. Um, we've got search lamps which look a little bit chunky but they're, uh, they're okay. Um, that's either the, the jack or gaff staff um, tripod support. We've got the ship's boats. Um, they're not clinker. They're all smooth. Um, some of these would definitely have been clinker, which is uh, a shame, but it is what it is. Um, the deck mounted guns are nicely molded and detailed, so I have no issues with those. They are solid barrels. No slide molding here. Um, the steam... Um, launch it needs windows painting in but um, it's just a bit of detail painting um, otherwise that's that's okay um, we've got so have a look you have jet pins on the inside of the the boats which is a little unfortunate so a little bit of work needs to be done before you can put the thwarts in um, and then these smaller boats have got the the thwarts moulded in and again there's a bit of a jet to pin in there so maybe you know an easy solution is put a canvas tarp over it or something like that um, which I sometimes do yeah okay nothing wrong with that it's all nice and crisply moulded so let's get you in nice and close you can see there's a little bit of seam clean up needed on the stanchions there um, it's just where the mould has slightly misaligned. You can see there you've got misalignment. But it's not major at all. Nice selection of parts. Brew E now and we've got a couple of slide moulded uh, buildings at the end. These are the ones that we saw um, in the instructions and I said one would be the map house, uh, chart room or whatever. Um, so yeah, uh, we've got the funnels which have got some uh, nice detail on them which will look nice under a wash. We've got more ship's boats. These were foam, foamed wrapped, these ones here. Um, and this one's actually got some nice detail inside without eject pins because they put them on the outside which um, is a nice touch if only they'd done that with some of the others but um, clearly they felt they couldn't um, we've got some eject pin marks under this deck but again should be easy just to sand away uh, another steel deck nicely done everything is crisp uh, that's what I thought was probably a raft of some type but I still don't really know uh, funnel caps funnel base for the larger funnel uh, I'm not quite sure what that is and we have some form of looks like an armored some form of armored structure so maybe um, something to do with armor coordination or or, or uh, armored bridge house or something like that I'm not really sure but all the parts are nicely done, nice and crisp, easy clean up, easy build. The final parts out of the box um, are the two hull halves and um, they are very nicely done indeed. We've got uh, plating runs from the bow, we've got lovely beautiful ram shaped bow there um, and we've got planking runs going down the side, we've got this bulge here in the middle. Um, and then as we get to the stern, that what they do is the limitations of the moulding process means these are going to distort. So they're either putting distortions in or they're not putting them in at all. And they've gone with not putting them in at all. So you may want to consider following this on um, and scribing in some more panel lines um, because all of this would be plated underneath as well. Now it depends on how you're displaying your ship. I'm going to have this um, displayed in water, so you're not going to see much 
above my finger anyway so uh, i'm happy with what they've done i won't need to do that but if you're going to display it on a stand i, I would certainly consider finishing the job with the plating um obviously i've not checked this against references so i don't know if positions of the scuttles are correct or anything like that but what i can say is they are nicely done um, they do have eyebrows above them so we've got the little rain aways um, hose pipes are don't need drilling through so that's nice um, lots and lots of scuttles at the back there and then we've got two little ridges and a door which is where our uh, stern gallery is going to go um, there is a little bit of just blending in needed to be done there can you see it's just a little bit rough there it, just how they've shaped the tool that just needs a little bit of smoothing off and, and sanding down f for my money then you've actually got quite a nicely done uh, bilge keel um, so there's nothing wrong with that um, yeah that's no no issues with the outside of that at all really nice um, you'll have a little bit of clean up when you put the two halves together um, but you've got a couple of pins um, for alignment and then the rest of it is done by the braces that go in um, so I can't imagine that you'll have any problems with that so probably a clamp um, right at the bow there but otherwise this all looks good um, and it's a decent thickness of plastic so um, you've got plenty of scope for sanding it smooth if that's what's needed when you've joined it together but nothing wrong with that so there you have it the hobby boss one to three fifty scale hms agamemnon um what are my first impressions i i have to say it's um a, a fairly standard offering and i think they've done a good job all the main stuff is there it's nicely done uh the parts are the usual standard so they're nice and crisp and no issues with um, short shots or um, deformed parts or poor molding so it's it's no issues for me there's no issues with the parts at all uh, the instructions also largely make sense there's one or two minor things that i i would change the order of but essentially if you follow the instructions you won't go far wrong um, paint instructions worth double checking um certainly at um from 1902 onwards royal navy ships were um a gray mixed from uh, a small amount of black paint uh royal navy black being added to large amounts of royal navy um white and that's how basically the instruction paint instruction for ships from 1902 is um uh, uh, an amount of black paint an amount of white paint and paint and gray um, so the basic colors are correct um, it's, um, it's nice to have a, a model of this subject matter um, last dreadnought um, pre dreadnought ships um, that it's uh, an interesting um, design period when you've got all of the thoughts of the pre dreadnought um, post ironclad era coming into its ultimate um, defined um, evolution before we move on to the dreadnought period. So uh, it's, an, uh, it's an interesting uh, design point in, in shipbuilding for me. Um, and, and I think she's really very pretty. Um, so a, a nice model um, all in all that is well designed and should build up um, easily low lights uh, you know i'm going to mention decals so i won't say any more about that it, it's a, always a disappointment um it's also a little bit disappointing that there isn't um a rigging uh map in there you know it doesn't cost them anything someone knows what it looks like because um even if they can't get the spelling of the name right they can they can depict all the rigging so it wouldn't cost much to have a page with a rigging plan on um so you can do that 
should you want to, because actually there is a lot of rope work on these pre-dreadnought um, ships, an awful lot of rope work. So if you really want to go to town in super detail, you'll have to do some research. Um, but yeah, she's um, she's a beautiful uh, a, a beautiful model, and I have no um, issues with it at all. I think she's uh, she'll be a stunning little display piece once done. Now, final thing to say is I've sort of teased you along a little bit um, as we've been talking about this, saying, "Well, well that, but I won't be referring to it as that, and I won't be there." I bought I've bought this model with a specific project in mind, and it's a project that um, I, I've had in mind for a, a few years, and uh, I basically had three options, three thoughts when it came to ships. Uh, it it was. Um, this one, or a Macassar, um, or go for um, something smaller like a torpedo launch. Um, why? Because when I come to build this, I won't be building it as HMS Agamemnon. I'll be building it as HMS Thunderchild. And she'll be in a diorama um, with War of the Worlds uh, tripods in the same scale, 1 to 350 scale, um, uh, and we will be uh, building her as a fictional ship, which gives me a little bit of leeway to do some fun stuff with her. Um, and um, because of when War of the Worlds is written and depicted, we could go with Black Hole, uh, White Upper Works Yellow Funnels, or White Hole um, uh, Yellow uh, Funnels and Upper Works. I've got a few different things that I could play with. Um, we're going to weather it, we're going to have have uh, firing our guns, we're going to have um, uh, the, the ship under attack from Martian tripods in a seascape. So I'm looking forward to doing that. I hope you enjoyed the first impressions. If you're interested in this kit, you now know what you get in the box. It's a lovely, lovely box. Don't let the lack of attention to detail on the, on the name deter you. It's a lovely kit. Okay, thanks for looking in. You enjoy your modelling and I'll see you very soon.